All right, you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today what we're going to do is we are going to work with the thermal energy equation. Let's suppose, for example, I have some water. All right, so I got some water here. And furthermore, I tell you that the mass of this water is 500 grams. So you know the mass of this water here. And I also tell you that the starting temperature of this water is 25 degrees Celsius. All right. Furthermore, this water is going to be left outside on a hot sunny day. So this water here is going to absorb a certain amount of heat or thermal energy or Q. Okay. Now if this water is left outside for a while out in the sun and absorbs a certain amount of thermal energy from the sun, then its temperature is going to increase. So let's suppose the temperature increases to say 95 degrees Celsius. And we want to figure out how much thermal energy this water here needs to absorb in order to raise its temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius. Do you think there might be a way of figuring this out? Do you think there might be a formula that will allow you to calculate changes in a substance's thermal energy as its temperature either decreases or increases? Well, the answer to that, people, is yes. We can use the thermal energy, energy equation which states that the amount of thermal energy released or absorbed by a system is equal to its mass times its specific heat capacity times its change in temperature. Now when we're working with this formula here, we must assume that there is no change in state of matter. If we assume that, then we can use this formula here to solve these types of problems. All right, now for, for purposes of, uh, of the examples we're about to give, uh, we need to make sure that when we're dealing with Q, that the units are in joules and when we're working with mass whoops when we're working with mass that the unit is in grams and when we're working with specific heat that the unit is in joules over grams times degrees Celsius and when we're working with temperature that our temperature is always in degrees Celsius alright so let's work a couple of examples all right, let's look here at example one. In example one here, we're going to solve for Q when there is no change in state of matter. So let's read this question. It says, how much thermal energy must 150 grams of water absorb to raise its temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius? So in this problem here, it's very similar to the, the problem that we just worked on a couple seconds ago. You've got 150 grams of water, and this water is going to absorb some energy. So its temperature, people, is going to change from 20 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius. And we want to figure out how much thermal energy or how much Q this water needs to absorb. So to begin with, let's get our formula down. All right, we know that Q equals MCAT, right? The mass of the object times its specific heat times its change in temperature. Okay? If we take a look at this problem here, 150 grams is going to be the substance's mass. What substance are we talking about? We are talking about water here. And if you look on a table of specific heat values, you will find that this is equal to 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And last but not least, the temperature is increasing from 20 to 95 degrees Celsius. So from that, we should be able to get a delta T or a change in temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. So now that we know these three values here, we can simply plug them into the thermal energy equation. The mass of this water is 150 grams times its specific heat value, which is 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius times its change in temperature which we just found it to be 75 degrees Celsius alright take a look we have grams on top grams on bottom they can cancel we have degrees Celsius on top degrees Celsius on bottom they can cancel leaving us with what unit left over in our answer joules so now we simply get a calculator out and solve this little problem. So we have 150 grams times 4.18 times 75 and we get an answer of 47,025 47,000 
and 25 joules of thermal energy. Okay, so what does this answer mean exact, exactly? Well, this means if you've got 150 grams of water, right, and its temperature is increasing from 20 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius, then that must mean that this water here is absorbing 47,025 joules of energy. Now, what if in this example here, the temperature was actually decreasing? Well, in this instance here, your final answer here, or Q, will end up being negative since it's releasing that much energy. All right, so pay attention to that. Let's take a look at another example, people. All right, in example two, let's read this. If it takes 1500 joules of energy to heat aluminum from 50 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, then what mass of aluminum is there? So in this little problem here, you can see that we're solving for M now. So let's go through this little word problem. We have 1500 joules. That is a measurement of energy or thermal energy or Q. The substance that we're talking about in this problem is aluminum. We can turn to a table and see that the specific heat of aluminum is 0 0.89 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. All right, what's happening to this aluminum? Well, it looks like the aluminum is going from 50 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. So from that, we should be able to figure out the delta T is 75 degrees Celsius. And we are asked to calculate M. All right, so when I come across a word problem, that's what I like to do. I like to read the word problem real briefly, and then I'll go straight to the numbers and the units attached to those numbers and figure out what the variables are. What I'll do then is look for little uh, question type words like what, when, how, or why. So in this problem here, what mass we're trying to solve for M. All right, so what formula people do we know uses Q, M, C, and delta T? Well, that's going to be the thermal energy equation. Okay? So in this problem here, what we're trying to do is we are trying to solve for the mass of this object. So what we have to do is we have to isolate M. In other words, we have to get M all by itself on one side of that equal sign. The way we do that, people, is divide by, divide by C delta T on both sides of this little arrow here, or equal sign here. C will now cancel out. And now the formula that we're going to use to solve this little problem is going to be M equals Q over C delta T. All right, so what is the uh, Q in this problem? It's 1,500 joules. What is the specific heat of aluminum? It's 0 0.89 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And what is the uh, what is the change in temperature? Well, we we found that to be 75 degrees Celsius. So get your little calculator out here, and we'll take 1500 divided by 0.89 times 75, and we end up with our answer of 22.5 grams. I'm going to put the answer over here. Okay. I simply rounded to the tenths place in this little answer. If your teacher is, uh, is having you guys take into consideration significant figures, please make sure that you do that. But there you go. Let's look at another example. All right, example three, people. It says to calculate the specific heat of an object, if it takes 4,500 joules of thermal energy to heat 50 grams of it up, 30 degrees Celsius. All right, so we have some sort of object here. It's going to absorb 4,500 joules of energy. It has a mass of 50 grams, and its change in temperature has already been given to you. It's 30 degrees. What we are being asked to find is the specific heat. So in this problem here, we're solving for C. All right, here is Q right here. We'll put a little Q. Here is the change in temperature. And last but not least, here is the mass of the object. So we know that Q is equal to uh, M cat M times C times delta T. And in this little problem here, what are we trying to solve for? We are trying to solve for C. We are trying to get C all by itself on one side of that equal sign. So we need to get rid of M and delta T. So we divide both sides by it. 
M is going to cancel, delta T is going to cancel, and now we've got our formula that we're going to use to solve this little problem, C equals Q over M delta T. Alright, so what is Q in this problem? The amount of thermal energy that is being absorbed is 4500 joules. What is the mass of this substance? It tells you in the problem the mass is 50 grams. And what is the change in its temperature? Well, it tells you this time that the change in temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. We do not need to calculate that. Alright, so we can actually do this in our heads. 50 times 30 is 1500 and 4500 divided by 1500 is 3. 3 what? What unit of measurement will we have left over? Well, we have joules over, over grams times degrees Celsius. Grams times degrees Celsius. So there's our final answer. Now what does this final answer mean, people? Well, this means that if you've got one gram of this substance and you want to heat it up one degree Celsius, it's going to take three joules of energy to do so. All right, let's look at another problem here. All right, in example four, we are going to solve for delta T, or a change in temperature. So let's look at this problem. It says to calculate the change in temperature of 500 grams of aluminum if it releases 2,500 joules of thermal energy. All right, so we have a chunk of aluminum here. It has a mass of 500 grams. This aluminum is going to release 2,500 joules of energy. So think about it. If it's releasing energy, what should happen to its temperature? If it's releasing heat or thermal energy, then its temperature should drop. So our final answer should be a negative temperature change. All right, so let's jump right in here. We know that Q equals... <clears throat> M times C times delta T. And in this problem, we're solving for delta T. We're trying to find the substance's change in temperature. So we're going to have to eliminate M and C from this side of the equation by dividing by it. And what you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other. This will now cancel. And so the formula that we're going to use to solve this little problem here is delta T equals Q over mass times specific heat. Alright, so let's go back to this equation here, this uh, word problem here. We have 500 grams here. That is a measurement of mass. 2500 joules is a measurement of Q or thermal energy. And right here we're dealing with aluminum again. And from that we should be able to get our specific heat value. So let's plug these values in here. We know Q is 2500 joules. We know the mass of this object is 500 grams. And last but not least, if you look at a table, or if you look in the last example problem, we know that the uh, specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.89 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. Alright, so take a look at what happens, people. We have joules canceling out. We have, uh, with these joules here, we've got grams canceling out here. And that will leave us with our degrees Celsius unit. Okay. Last thing we forgot to do here. Take a look. The amount of thermal energy uh, associated with this is 2,500 joules, but it's being released. We have to pay attention to that. If it's being released, then the sign of this right here should be negative. All right. So don't forget that. That will be very important. So now I just get my calculator out and I take a negative 2,500 divided by 500 times 0.89 and I end up with a negative 5.6 degrees Celsius. Let's just get rid of this. Degrees Celsius. Okay, so if this uh, this 500 gram piece of aluminum is, a release, is releasing 2500 joules of energy it will be associated with a negative 5.6 temperature decrease. Let's look at the next example. All right, people, in this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for uh, a substance's final temperature. So let's read this problem here. It says 100 grams of gold has a starting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. 
If it absorbs 1500 joules of energy, then what will its final temperature be? All right, so let's see here. We have a chunk of gold here. Here's my gold, AU. And it looks like this chunk of gold has a starting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. This chunk of gold also has a mass of 100 grams. And what's going to happen to this chunk of gold is, is that's going to absorb 15,000 joules of energy from some sort of heat source. All right, what we want to know is if this chunk of gold absorbs 15,000 joules, what we want to calculate, people, is its final temperature. All right, so what we first have to calculate then is its change in temperature. We will have to calculate its change in temperature first. If we know its change in temperature, we can then add the change in temperature, people, to the starting temperature, and that will give you your final answer, the final temperature. All right, this problem is asking you to find the final temperature. All right, so once again, we'll start with our thermal energy equation. We know that Q equals MCAT. And in this little problem here, we're trying to solve for delta T. So we must get rid of M and C by dividing both sides of this, of this equation by M and C. This will cancel out. And now the chemical uh, equation, or I'm sorry, the equation that we're going to use to solve this little problem here will be Q, or delta T equals Q over M times C. So what is Q in this problem? It's absorbing, it's absorbing 1,500 joules. So it should be a positive 15,000 joules. The mass of this, uh, of this gold is 100 grams. It says right here, 100 grams. And last but not least, we're dealing with gold. And if you turn to a table uh, of specific, uh, specific heat values, you'll find that the specific heat of gold is 0 0.13 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. So we'll put that right here, uh, 0 0.13 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. Look what cancels out. We've got grams on top, grams on bottom. We've got joules on bottom, joules on top, leaving you with what unit left over? Degrees Celsius. So now I'll simply get my calculator out. I'll take 15,000 divided by 100 times 0.13 and I will end up with 1,000 153.8 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I'm running out of room here, people. All right, so this is not my final answer, people. This is just the change in temperature. This is just the change in temperature, people. What we are being asked to find is the final temperature. So you must take this now and add it to your starting temperature, and that will give you your final temperature. So to get the final temperature, I will take the starting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and I will add my change in temperature 1153.8 degrees. I'll get my calculator out and this is equal to 1168 So let's look at this question again. If you've got a chunk of gold that has a mass of 100 grams and it absorbs 15,000 joules of energy and has a starting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, it's going to heat up to 1,168.8 degrees Celsius. That is what its final temperature will be. So I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching.